So let's talk about Insidious the Red Door, the finale. We'll say why I'm saying it that way at the end of the video. Gotta do my hair better, y'all. But we'll talk about Insidious the Red Door, its finale, what it sets up in that post credit scene, if you will. So before we get any further into that, we are running a giveaway at 20,000 subscribers. We'll announce a winner. So we are less than about 200 to go from there. So make sure you're subscribed and commenting below. But let's get into it. Insidious the Red Door. I see a red door and I want to paint it black. We'll talk about that. But pretty much we are set 10 years after the events of the second film where we saw that Josh and Dalton have now sort of suppressed these memories of everything that was happening to them with the um, further, with the spirits, demons, whatever you want to call them. And of course, we saw that Elise had died as well at the hands of Josh. And now it seems that all these years later, all of this baggage that they've had, all of this trauma, if you will, has sort of started to catch up with them and things are starting to sort of crumble. This sort of hypnosis that they had where they were sort of suppressing the memories, it all seems to start to crack and things are starting to resurface again. With Dalton now going to college and sort of seeing that they are able to do the ash projection and all of that. Which can seem kind of cool, right? If you don't know exactly what that leads to, you could see why Dalton would think that would be something that's cool to do and all of that. But the demons, the spirits and all of that are starting to cross over into the real world. And that's where things are not looking good. Josh is also realizing that there may be something wrong with them. And they go to the doctor. They try to figure out what's going on. Ultimately, they realize that there is maybe something with their own father who apparently was called a schizophrenic for believing that they were astral projecting all of that and now josh is realizing this may be something that is sort of being passed down on him and eventually his son as well we find out that josh's father ultimately that was their demise and now we know that josh is going to do whatever it takes to save dalton who now has seemingly opened a door for the demons and of course lipstick demon is back and we see that there is a whole thing going on now where josh has to go and save dalton from this demon who now has dalton shackled up and you know we were expecting to see more of the lipstick demon and everything and people were excited and it was there but not really there right that's that's the best way to put it uh josh ultimately does save dalton and stays behind in order to hold the door and we had our whole door here um if you will in the insidious franchise which which is always great to see and we see that dalton is able to save josh by painting the red door black that's why i said i see a red door and i want to paint it black but you know it, it's funny when things happen like that right Ultimately, Josh and Dalton are able to be saved and we see that they decide not to get rid of the artwork of the red door that now is the black door because as Dalton says, you can't keep suppressing things. You have to face all of these things and have to continue forward. We see that there is still a light turned on at the end in the post credit scene and that could just mean that we're setting up sequels if this movie does a million million millions of dollars at the box office right so we also see elise at the end of the film although josh is not really able to remember really who elise is we all know who elise is and how much of an importance elise was to josh and dalton and the lamberts and i think that this is definitely a great way to send off the lamberts if you will if we do get more insidious movies, we probably will focus on other people, other families and all of that. But I think that this was such a good conclusive ending to them, regardless if the story really wasn't all there and everything else about the movie. I think in the overall big picture, it was good to sort of come back to it in the ideas here presented were great about sort of how we have trauma in our lives and all of that and sort of buried and buried and buried and we think we're okay for all of these years and all of this time and then ultimately it resurfaces and it comes back stronger than ever instead of just tackling it forward and sort of trying to heal from it we just decide to sort of bury it and that's not the best way to do it and i thought that that was sort of a good way to approach the story and come back to it after all of these years i think that the direction everything patrick wilson had for instance the uh, red door was also good taking us back to the roots and all of that of it all but at the same time i do um, see where people's problems are with spending too much time with the past and not really doing anything new but story-wise i think that having patrick wilson's character josh sort of realizing everything that was wrong about what they did that many years ago and not really sort of addressing him especially he himself with his father and the problems his father had i think that's definitely a good thing that was explored in this movie and it makes it such a more interesting um story just 
I think it's just the execution that people really didn't vibe with, but that's definitely the ending right there. The Lamberts were ultimately able to overcome all of this. The visions that Dalton had with the man with the hammer, of course, he believed to be his dad who was doing all of this in Insidious 2 as we remember, but ultimately we realized at the end and Dalton as well that this was just because the father was possessed because we also see Dalton get possessed as well. So it kind of is more understanding of what was going on there. And, you know, it could have been a better story thing told if it would have been a little bit sooner because I feel like that was the reason they were going so much back and forth between uh, both tales is because maybe they wanted to have it fresher in people's minds. But ultimately, that is the ending to Insidious the Red Door. We pretty much see that Josh and Dalton's relationship gets better after this. Does the rest of the family's relationship get better? I think one could hope that after Josh especially um, goes through all of this, kind of like the therapy of sorts, that they will be able to overcome what that was that sort of separated the family at during that time that we left them in Sidious 2. And I think that there was definitely some pretty good ideas here, like I said at the beginning, about sort of assessing trauma and really tackling it face on and not really trying to walk away from it or sort of bury it as they did in Insidious 2 and sort of coming to that realization in the end of the movie that that was not the way to go. And moving forward, that's not the way they're going to be doing things. They're going to be really addressing all of these issues that they may have and trying their best to overcome them. So some Something like this doesn't ever happen again where they had all of this time to bottle it up and then it's like you shake a soda can and it just blows everywhere and that's exactly what we saw here but in this case it was like demons and all that evil stuff so definitely not what you want to do but overall let me know your thoughts and your opinions on insidious the red door and its ending what do you think about that post credit scene that sort of sets up more insidious movies would you be open for that or do you think that this is a good time to close this chapter of this um story because i assure you they will make more insidious movies in the future but maybe not the near future is the best time but let me know your thoughts and opinions down below and we will have a mission possible dead reckoning review so check that out when it comes out as well as well as a review on the horrors of dolores roach which is a new show on amazon prime video from blumhouse so some pretty good spooky stuff this weekend let me know what you think make sure you're subscribed for more on all the things you love and we are also running a giveaway you have to be subscribed and comment below you want to enter the giveaway to enter the giveaway so all you have to do is just say i want to enter the giveaway that gets you an entry I'll see you all of you next time. Stay safe. Stay positive.